from the bottom. From the bottom. You know we got them. Wake up, wake up, wake up once again. Why did I not say it once again? Because I'm probably end up keeping that bleep in the blue in. But your boys, what we going to do is, what do you want to explain what, what we, we doing? Well, the thing that we doing, you know, we got families. And for the past, what, two, about two, two, two years, we was dropping episodes every, every week. week. You know, family getting bigger. Life's getting busier. Yeah. So, therefore, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change it from every week, a new episode, to every other, other week. week. That way we can bring y'all a quality product and not just rush. A.K.A. that Minnesota heat. But, no, but you know, we're going to let y'all know when we're going back to a week. Yeah. You know, but this is just to make, you know, to help, to help us out and, you know, make sure we bring y'all quality stuff. You know, quality over quantity, you dig? Yeah. And also, you know, some new some new ideas, some new things. Yeah, but that don't mean that we won't be going back to weekly in the future. Yeah. But just as right now, you know, we have to tone it down to every other week. And you know what? Uh, shout out to Kennedy because uh, uh, my guy, he was in uh, North Carolina and he had his own catering business and sunk and cooked. And he finally gave that up. Well, I ain't going to say he gave it up, but he was like, I'm coming into a new adventure, you know, a new place in my life where things are different. You know, I want to make a new approach. I want to try something different. And I'm like, okay, I see you. So, you know, ain't nothing wrong with taking a break to scope things out to be like, what's the next move? So, so yeah. Yeah, you know, we don't want to stop this. Nah. We just have to reevaluate what we're we doing. doing. Now, see, now with that being said, that lets us jump out to the first topic. To What's be the honest. first topic? The empire. Oh, oh not okay. power. Break it down. What's, what's the question? The in, uh, JC. Wait, I'm sorry, JC. Jesse. Yeah. Is that how uh, Jesse Smollett? Smollett. 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 But they know who you're talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about now. This whole thing he got going has been like everywhere. I'm so tired of hearing, like, of it. It's killing me. And it's like. The question is, which side do you believe him or do you not believe him? That's a hard. You know what? That's like the hardest question because do you believe Kim Kardashian got robbed or do you believe that was a setup? Just to be back in light, in the limelight. I mean, once you think about it, a lot of celebrities do do a lot of stuff to stay in the limelight. Exactly. I mean, once their flames start to go out, you gotta, you, you ain't making money unless they talking about you. Yo, this dude, check it. He was getting paid. How much? Terrence Howard, uh, to Raji, P. Hansen. P. Hansen, she was getting paid. They were getting paid like a hundred and seventy five thousand a episode. He was only getting like thirty five to I think fifty an episode. See, but you can't compare they he can't compare himself to them two. No. Because if you say if you say name four people off of Empire, mm-hmm. who you gonna name? Oh, you're gonna name yeah. Terrence Howard, Taraji P. Henson, and that's it. But if you see him out and about, you're going to be like, you ain't going to say, oh, that's, that's a, you're Jesse. Gonna say, oh, you're going to be like, oh, that's, that's your boy. the guy from the Empire. <laughs> but see, this is this is where it takes me. It takes me to that. Now, if this is a scandal, he's not at that point in his career where, well, I think so. It's not to where it's, it can take him higher. Because you know some scandals, 
people. They take they you 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 don't like the little one little girl catch me outside. She went. <laughs> I'm saying that wasn't a scandal. Though. The, well, that was just a clip that went viral. That was a clip that went viral. Would you? I'm saying this went rival, you know, because they could have left all that under the dust. But what? It's all in the media. You right, but the little clip with the little chick, I'm saying that was my choice. But they could have left this little clip. So you saying people don't believe him it, because of it, who he is? It could that be. he's not that high up. So you thinking that his flame was burning out? And that he had to get people to start talking back about him. It probably was. It wasn't getting burnt out. It just wasn't lit like he would have wanted to. Or it's not being lit think, fast enough. I mean, you got to think. Just think. If this scandal didn't happen. Like, if he was able to pull it off. Do you understand what that would have did to his career? Yeah, it helped Skyrocketed. him. Skyrocketed. Yeah, but at the same time, now that his name and face is everywhere, I'm saying, if this right here, if this opens up doors, that lets you know, Hollywood itself ain't nothing but a... I mean, but Hollywood it. is fake. Yeah. I mean, just sit back and think about this. What just happened this past week? Like, every time, like, even the Kardashians, I don't even keep up with them. But every time something happened, like, they start to dim out. S- some type of scandal happened, and mm-hmm. they be right back up. They be right back up. Like, they were talking about Tristan Thompson and them on ESPN. Mm. You know, talking about what they do in their personal life. Yeah, you like, why? You know, and I'm thinking, like, do you think they paid that girl to go along with the story? They come to you, like, hey, five mil. Well, I mean, think about the publicity. They getting, like... Hundred million dollars publicity off of this. They say, "Hey, yeah, I'll pay you five mil, you know, just to run along. You don't have to say you did nothing with them, mm-hmm. nothing like that, you know. But you just run along with. It. You just don't say we had this conversation. Yeah, and we'll make sure you got the money in the bank. You know, I mean, people are like, all right, but man, I'm pretty sure that go a lot. Like, what, <laughs> man." But I, I don't know, man. It's it's just by just being, I guess, Hollywood, Holly weird, however you want to put it. I'm saying there's a lot of things that you know, especially now with the internet being like the main source of but of information. My niece was talking about. They said that the Jesse dude wrote a check, but that was for training. Cause one of them dudes was his trainer. Mm. You know, I, I mean, I don't really keep up with it. Because mm-hmm. I don't really care about it. Yeah. So, you know, I just I just really want to see how it's going to play out. Yeah, man, it is one is, like I said, man, I, I think so. Because the reason why I say that is because, man, the media, I mean, they just replay. And it's like the main focus. I mean, when every time something, to, if you ask me every time something like this is the main focus, it's like for real. I'm like, so what bill is y'all trying to pass? What I mean, y'all... Boys, th- people care more about celebrity lives than they care about uh, politics in the country. Exactly. So that le- that leads me to believe whenever they do do that, what are they actually doing? To whereas it's kind of like them, way them underneath, you know, underneath the radar, the radar. And then all of a sudden, once this that's been taken over dims down and die out oh well this bill was passed right around the time when such and such was happening i mean because there's the thing with the owner of the patriots uh the whole r kelly i mean that's all you've been hearing about i mean but think about it all of a sudden this billionaire guy mm -hmm. get caught going to a spa or whatever Mm -hmm. massage parlor at the same time that he's kicking it with Jay Z and Meek Mill about jail reform. That's true. Now they know he got the power and the money, but now they want this scandal to probably rock him. Yeah. You know, so it's, I don't know, man. This stuff's so no, crazy. See, why, see why you think I was saying man, 
and and that's true. You think about the same thing that was happening with uh Bill Cosby. All this thing come down until uh, I was reading that he was about to he was trying to buy NBC. So if you, come on now, a black man with that much power, I'm pretty sure at some point it was like, nah, we can't let that happen. Because I'm saying, it probably would have been too much positivity going on, and they don't want that. Well, no, it ain't positivity. It just that it would have shook the core because of it, everything that's been happening. Exactly. Too much of too much of awakening. That's what I think, bro. I think the moment they see something that awake that awakens the the majority, the people... They like we can't do that because a lot of man. If you notice, man, a lot of people don't go touched, uncensored, and all it is. It's until they're trying to do a power move or something where they like, nah, we can't let that flow. Well, I mean, if you think about it, all these big record label companies, they always sign to somebody. But if a black company come and they the big company like Interscope. And like all the the big big companies, mm-hmm. who other artists can sign to, whoever at the head of that thing gonna have a scandal coming right behind them. You think so? Yeah, something gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all. I think it's when it's uh somebody said it that <laughs> it made sense. It was this old white guy. He was he was talking. Uh, he was like a whistleblower. I can't remember his name, but uh, he was saying, you think about it. They pay entertainers millions to do what? To shoot a ball through a hoop? He was like, come on, you got it. It, it, it has to be something behind, you know, their madness because they're, they, you're entertained. So by you being entertained, you don't understand what they're doing going behind you. You know, like there's always something going on behind their propaganda but still to fulfill your, you know, your enjoyment or happiness. And I'm like, well, that makes sense because you think about it. We go see them play for two, like basketball, see them play for like two and a half hours, three hours. And they make money off. They get paid off of that. I mean, but you you have to think just like the Zion Williams situation. Oh, dude. You know, this is the thing that I was asking. If you a D one athlete, but mm. you don't accept a scholarship and you pay your own way to go to school, mm-hmm. do you think you should be able to profit off your name in school? Yeah. If the school didn't give you a scholarship, you paying your own way. You damn right. You know that's the hard part right there. It's think? like baseball can go to the league mm. right out of high school. Yeah. Hockey can go to the league. Football and basketball, you have to go to college. Now, why would people want to switch that up? Which, which what two sports bring the most money in college? Football and basketball. Now, why would you mess up something when people are getting paid? I mean, when you the NCAA making money, making Amen. billions. Why would somebody want to say, "Hey, no, you just skip it and you just go to the G League or just go to the league," even though over in Europe they could come from high school to the league. From here too, no. That's from here, they have to go a year to college, or you have to be a year removed from high school to go and play overseas. To go play in the NBA. No, no, no. I'm talking about overseas. Overseas, they could, yeah, they could come over here and play. Yep, yep. But they can even start earlier, like Luka Doncic. How old is he? Eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, he's somewhere around twenty. I don't know how old he is. Son, but he's been playing professional forever. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that's the hard part is these kids don't have to go to school. And even when they do go to school and say, like, they come from, like, the poor neighborhood, mm-hmm. they still can't take care of their family because you can't get a job unless it's NCAA approved yep. while you in college. So all the stuff, the money, the food, it have to come from the school. Nah, and by you making that point, they they wouldn't make all that money on them on top players, but a lot of them players you don't know, get recruited. You know how to much the they made on Zion? That little Duke North Carolina game when his shoe blew out. How much? The tickets were going like ten. Oh, 
10, tickets 000? to a college. No, no, ten dollars. No, ten thousand. Yeah, you got. President so you Obama. mean to tell you me you got all these celebrities there? You know how much money that game raked in? How much? And they ain't getting nothing but a pair of Kyrie's for it. Are you serious? How much? It had to be close. It had to be over a mil. Plus, oh, with the yeah. ESPN and everybody else, it was way over a mil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Them players ain't getting nothing. No, nah, you ain't getting nothing. Them players ain't the getting coach, nothing. The coach, everybody else getting money. You know what the... You the know school what, getting paid. You, you, know you what, ain't getting... You, you know just, what these you players get? You just getting get? the name. You getting to wear that name, and you getting the all the Nike apparel. That, that's all. Hey, and guess what? An injury that he... I mean, when these players get an injury, it's like... They do like a regular job. If you don't get healed and you can't perform like they expect you to do, man, they can you like an empty beer, bro. They get rid of you. Whoop, whoop. And, and, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. It's all At the end of the day, even for these college players and high school players, it's like it all, it's all becoming a business. It's been it's, a business. I mean, and that's, you're right. It's been a business. And at the same time, it's like, yo. It sucks because off of these players, these who's ever over the association, they make bank. The coaches make bank, and these players don't get none of that. They get a free ride to school, which at the same time just passes them by. <laughs> they, they, I mean, only be in school if you know you're going to the NBA the first round or whatever. You know you're going to get drafted. The kids on stay in school like what six months, if that, yeah, and that's even if they go to class. Yeah, that's if you're not coming back. Yeah, because they be doing what taking pictures, doing this, signing autographs, Son. and you can't even sign something to make money off your own name. Man, we got so off topic. We were talking about nah, Jesse. That's not man. I'm just saying all that we, scandal. We was on that for. A while. But what's the next but, topic? But no, I got a question though. Yeah, now since, yeah. uh. Let me see. Since he did that with Nike, I mean, since his shoe tore apart, I was hearing that it was some some deals with Nike. I mean, like a uh, big problem. They lost a billion dollars in stock. A billion off that one incident. But I mean, just watch. They gonna make up for it. He gonna get a gigantic contract from Nike. You think so? Just like he coming in with that. With that LeBron hype. And mentality, yeah. Mm, man. I don't when know. When you got the president coming to your game? Your college game? Dude, 10000 a ticket to go see. Dog. Oh, so, that's yeah, like, he coming. Nike going to break him off. They going to they gonna make up for that. Oh, yeah. They going to, they going to, they, pro, they going to, they paying. As of now, they probably dishing sun off underneath. I'm nah, saying. They just waiting. Oh, and to everything. They went till he finished with college. <laughs> Watch. As soon as he, as soon as he finished, and you know he declare, mm-hmm. he gonna be signed a humongous shoe deal. You know, man. You know what? They don't look at. It's cra- They look at these kids like a, like a, like a walking casino, like a jackpot. When they be like, oh man. You can play. You you can play ball. You you in school right now? Well, they just who? I mean, who it, looking at them it, like be, that? it be coaches like that. I mean, it, it means parents like that. It's, Family members like that. School, high school, middle school. Oh, like you that. got skills? Yeah, and that's true. I'd be like, well, just because they got skills, I mean, that's what they want to do. Be like, you know, I don't want to drown my kids. If that's what you love to do, do that. But I ain't gonna drown you. If you want me to train, I'm gonna train you. But other than that, nah. But you right. We off topic like always, man. But since we own basketball, we might as well talk about LeBron. What, what, what what's wrong with LeBron? What? Seems like he always has an effect on uh the players that he around. Um some or some effects are better than others, but I don't know. I think I think he's so used to winning and having it kind of his way that he thought it was going to be different. Well, I mean, it's still his way. Well, I mean, win wise, 
Because even even oh, no, he knew that wasn't gonna happen. Well, shit. He in the he in the west. Well, he not in the east no more. But see, but see the thing. This the thing that I don't like about it is, son. I mean, he's causing too much commotion, and as a player or as his teammate, I'm saying it's some shit that'll knock you off your game. When you come in as a superstar, you are. You come in there already. They get. I mean, Lakers. All of a sudden, they they was always that team to talk about. But now, since LeBron on it, it's you know LeBron and the Lakers. Like always, LeBron and whatever team he's on. I mean, it's like if they ain't doing something right because they miss some shots or they don't play defense on certain plays. I'm looking like, dude. You doing too much sometimes, man. Just play ball. Well, I, we need Anthony Davis. Are you, rec- you know, starting recruiting already? And I understand the whole, you know, you want to win. Because I was, uh, uh, shout out to Ben. I was checking out his, uh, one of his ben episodes. BS3 Sports yeah. X Squad. And, uh, they were talking about the, uh, like players recruiting. Like Bradley Bill was open about, you know, uh, he wanted to play with some other guys, you know, who knew how to play. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, um, where is the where is the fun in seeing, like, LeBron James and Anthony Davis go at it? And it was, with me, it was the same thing with Durant. Well, I mean, it's not the old school. I mean, this is the time of people teaming up, just like AAU and all that stuff like that in college. But that's the thing, though. It it's I don't find it exciting when they do that. The because, only thing that I don't understand is everybody in the NBA got the same stuff that every other NBA player got. You got the top doctors. You have the top facilities. Mm-hmm. You got basketball gym 24-7 access. Mm-hmm. You got trainers 24-7. Mm-hmm. I don't understand what make other NBA players stand out more than them. I mean, I understand like your physical, like LeBron run like a deer. He's 6'8". But there's other people in the league 6'8". And I'm the same side, just like LeBron. But I don't understand why they can't get in the gym and work just as hard like Kobe now. I, you know, I think a lot of them do. I, I mean, a lot of them guys do put in work. I just think just by him, like LeBron, coming into the league like he did. Because now if you look back, I mean, because LeBron came to the league, he came to the league to prove a point. And they already had, a, a, man, they was holding his uh his play up high. I mean, they had him on that scale that was up there. And with that being said... Um, you know, it was always well. LeBron is the greatest, the great versus Andy the Kumpo. I'm saying when he first came in the league, he wasn't all that great. Now over the years, he put in them hours, and he put in that time. And what you looking at? You looking at a damn freak of nature. Well, that's LeBron though, because LeBron didn't come to the league with a shot. He was okay. His shotting's got better. Um, his passing. I ain't gonna lie. I like. I like. I like. I like his style. He hasn't been on points in high school. Yep. Yeah, defense wise, he he has the whole package, and that's the thing. Well, but <laughs> shit, he getting tired now. He and and he and, he know that he don't got that much time to sit back and wait for these players to develop. And that's true. But I think he it, need player that's ready right now. But, but in the same time, he messed up because he shot these people, shot these kids' confidence. Uh, the they know now that he don't want me here. Yeah. I mean, it was just, I mean, dog. So, you know, now you playing like. You got this. With dope in the stuff you bagging up from the bottom podcast in the kitchen cooking up. <laughs> Kelly J at this, we discuss. If you have a question on the story, call and hit us up. <laughs> Here it is, 253-234-71 and 49. Calling you can hit that line. Then leave a voicemail, love what's on your mind. <laughs> Go ahead and hit that line. Then leave a voicemail, love hey, what's on your mind. Check, check it. Pride after pride when we're speaking. They will never understand why I love reaching. 
Across the world unto our people who ain't eating it Let's agree to join together, lead a world with peace in it If you agree, let's sit down and handle it You bring your plans, we'll bring ours to scrambling Then we can go and start from that From the bottom, keeping love intact huh. We can go and start from that From the bottom, keeping love intact Developing, I mean, because last shot I mentioned it before. Lakers were they weren't they weren't too bad ending the season. They were pretty nice, even with having a uh, Randall and even that one guy that came in for like that one day. Uh, I forgot. I think his name was Ingram. What's his name? Ingram. Ingram's still on the team. Not Brandon. Brandon. I'm Ingram not talking. Is still on the team. Not. Brandon. I'm not talking about him. It was another guy. I think his name was. Oh, you mean from the D League? Yeah. Yeah, I know. You yeah, too. he came in, and like I said, man, the Lakers went out with a bang, you know. But yeah, he came. He shot their confidence down like he was playing duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew. Confidence went on zero, right? I mean, quick. but then don't you think he earned that right, though? Who, LeBron? Yeah. Nah. Like, man, if you if you he were one of the greatest ever. How did he not learn earn that right well, to call shots like that? If you gonna call, if you call yourself the greatest, and you want to continue to be the greatest and go out like the greatest, you have to make the greatest moves. Meaning, you have to show your team, not bitch. I need y'all off of there. I'm saying you just can't go to a new store and be like, hey, this is what's gonna happen. I'm saying you gotta be like, hey, we need to get on that same page. You yeah, heard but- me? When he first came, they had the winning record. He went out with the injury. So who fault is that they couldn't keep it going? Is that LeBron's fault? No. So, well, I'm to be like I hey, like I said from the beginning, son. At times, I think it's the hype, or just the the um just the attention that some pay, players that they possess that knocks other players off of their game. Because they're, I'm saying, because the Lakers, every team is in a limelight at some point. I want to say. But the Lakers wasn't in it like this for a long time. I mean, since Kobe. Lonzo Ball was here, but it wasn't a whole big thing like LeBron being there. So I th- at some point, I, I mean, I think it may... It may put him on the side where, you know, we need to see what he's talking about. And then when he get there, it's kind of one of those, this my teams. This is like, you know, this is what's going to happen. This doing this. I understand you're a great player, not play, play. You talk to me so we can get on that same page. Like what Rondo did. You know, I'm pretty sure LeBron did the same thing. But Rondo was like, look, you know, let me figure out the players, you know, what they do a lot. You know, give me film. Let me see who what's the what's his spot so I can feed him in his spot. So you know, I'm saying, you know, just things like that. Kind of like what Peyton Manning does, or you know, I can see what Drew Brees does, you know. Uh, like I said, I'm not saying that LeBron, uh, you, you know You can't blame it all on LeBron. No, no, no. I'm not I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying though, uh even when you have that attention and you're that great player, it's still a point where you should know how to humble yourself to whereas you help out your team and you get to know your team and it's Everything don't work out. I mean, first year sure around, I'm pretty sure he got to know him. But yeah, at the end of the day, the yeah. Lakers trying to win now because mm-hmm. LeBron don't got that much time. Yeah, and that's what and it's is. a business. So yeah, I guess the rookies should know that. They should I mean, known that. I guess he should have. Uh, who who won trade for Anthony Davis? Hey, but it's just that the Pelicans want the whole Lakers team. Other than LeBron, mm. they just asked for way too much. How much was they asking for? I don't they know. want everybody for 
Anthony Davis. Just for Anthony Davis. <laughs> yeah. bitch would have been empty. Yeah, they just gave him the mascot, the arena and everything. Man, they probably would have too, Zach. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, when it comes to that, it comes to that, man. But what's the next topic? Oh, oh, I got that. Oh, okay. Oh, my bad. My bad. I thought we still you. Yeah. Wait, 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 y'all. Wait. I know I should have been prepared. Wait, man. Hold up. But before, All right. All right. hold that note. Do you really think, this is the next topic, y'all, by the way. Do you really think company making mistakes by having racist products really matter? Is it really for free publicity? And will people, Black people really stop wearing products. Oh. Um. No. Do. Um, you think it's a mistake that they always coming out with this racist product and they be like, oh, my bad. We're going to take it down. Sorry about that. Nope. It's just, hey, it's just like the whole Jesse situation. With hits, I'm saying, you know, all oh, our fault. And then all of us, before you know it, they sales go up because people probably was coming to that point where, you know, why do we need to get this? Because when I went to Vegas, I went inside of a Gucci store and I'm looking at this Did stuff. Did you get the headband? Man. Oh, the one like Soldier Boy? Yeah, you got the headband. That headband looked like, yo, it looked like somebody with a fat ass head and a helmet stretched <laughs> I'm just saying, son. Oh, well, okay, what happened when you went to the Gucci store? <laughs> <laughs> they had stressed. the stretch out version? Nah, dog, they had some shoes that looked like they were some British Knights. And I'm like, some British Knights. And them look like some shoes that, man, look like they wearing rugby. I mean, that's what it looked like. I mean, it, it looked off. The shoes looked awful. They had some Gucci slippers that was like, a hundred, two hundred dollars. I'm like, for why? The name. I mean, and and see, that's the whole thing. And like I said, man, I I can see their sales going down. So to get your name out there, just like celebrities, you know what to do. What, what's the cost? You know what would you do? And if for something like that, I'm saying for us and our culture, I know for over the years, man. Even think about it. A person, well, a grown ass person, an adult, a parent, will go broke just to go and buy the J's. They priorities backwards. Not a. Hey, they would not. I say, bro, they would not spend time with their child, but they would go wait in the line for two days to go get some J's. Does that make sense? They gotta stay fresh. They gotta stay fresh, and and well, I'm, well, the point I'm getting at is, even if Gucci was to do something like that, would have happened. People would pull the Floyd Mayweather and be Gucci down. Now, with that being said, no telling what Gucci did. They probably could have paid him to do something like that. No, you don't think they would? No, nope. it is Floyd. You know he gonna buy them stuff anyway. But what if they paid him they more? They already got the but publicity, they, though. So what they need him for? I'm they telling already you, got everybody talking about Gucci. And, hey, you know, you never do to get that That's dollar. what they do. They always have them. Okay, let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. They always have the mistake of making it about something about the black people, right? Mm -hmm. But you never hear about no other race. Nope. Because if they do another race, it ain't gonna get the same level of publicity as they do. Are uh, they probably gonna get the same uproar like when they do black people? Yeah, because so be. therefore they make it. It go through thirty people to get approved, and then they just be like, "My bad, we it, it slipped through the cracks." <laughs> but then by the idea that they already got the million dollar worth of worldwide publicity for nothing, for nothing, for free. <laughs> Maybe. So you you just sit back and think like, do you really think that was a mistake? Nah, I don't think it was in in any any company that does that, man. Because hey, I mean, Foot Action ain't never had that mistake. Why would they? What Foot Action do? Nothing. They never had that mistake. Like all these high end play, well, except for H and M, except for like H, you know, H and M not high end, but. 
you, you know, it's such like Gucci and Prada and everybody else having all these mistakes out yeah. the blue. Yeah. And then don't know where it's coming from. You ain't never seen a dollar and, store have a mistake. And that's how they do it. And they, uh, who was it? What was people boycotting? It was from something when they started boycotting. And before you know it, everything changed. I mean, nothing really changed. It changed for a little second. But before you know it, I'm saying like like the whole thing with Floyd Mayweather did, you know. And there's people like that be like, well, man, you know, when it come, when I think when it comes to money at some point, people look at it well. The thing I don't understand is why if it was like, yeah, if it was such a big deal. Why would we only stop wearing it for three months? What do that prove? So I put my Gucci stuff up, and then they come eleven fifty nine. Be like, oh yeah, it's about that time to go break the Gucci back out. It's about my three three month mark, three month minimum, <laughs> three month max, baby. I, man, but I gotta say one PSA: as black people, we gotta stop burning stuff that we already bought. Just go, if something like that happened again, just go give it to a poor person to go donate it or something like. But you burning it is not really helping you because you paid for it. So, therefore, they don't really care what you do with your stuff. Yeah. Because you already paid them for the stuff. Yep. Once it's out the stores, they don't care. No, they don't care. (laughs) They don't care. And, (laughs) And, yeah, man. The whole, the whole, it's, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's just crazy, man. Just the things like that. I mean, if you think about it, why would you even pay that much for a piece of clothing? You know, because that was the piggyback for my next topic. Do you really think the high-end fashion people care about black people? Plus, or do you care about their clothes? Nope. Since they so expensive, I mean, hey, like this sounds like rich people problem. Tell you the truth, and and you know the funny part, it don't be rich people problem. It's only poor people problems. It's the people who try to. Let me see. I seen a commercial, and it's funny. It was from back in the day, on how uh, they was they were talking about how to get black people to uh, how to consume a wait the. Uh, how to get black people to consume stuff or how the consumer wait it's the consumer is the it's the company correct or are we the the customer's consumer wait which one the company's the consumer or is it the customer no you are the consumer okay they tried to get us to uh the businesses uh for black people since we wasn't like on the priority list or since we were looked at as being the low of the low as being nothing having fancy things will put us in a place where we're on another level we're not poor this represents me having money in some type of class because you think about it it was always been like that well let me ask you something since you said that, mm-hmm. you go on Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> okay. If it was a poor person putting up a car like a night day escort, do you think people really bad an eye? A person wearing a regular white t-shirt or some regular like white Reeboks, mm-hmm. you think a person really going to bad an eye? Mm-hmm. Compared to the person who put up a Rolls Royce, a half a million dollar car, yep. wearing a Gucci t shirt with some Balenciaga shoes on. Mm-hmm. That does what? That makes that's that puts you in another class. I mean, vision wise. I mean, I see you be like, dang, they they doing good they for themselves. It. Yeah, and that's what the whole and and the thing is was this was a racist commercial. They had black people in it. Black, I mean, a dude had on a long coat with his little hat on with his with his old lady. And it was like, we want them to feel like they are like us, but not knowing that they're only making us richer. And, you know, they're, they, look, they're, they look more dumb by, you know, we still look at them as nothing. But we treat them, but we treat them like 
they are good people. Some shit like that. I'm like, oh no, they always had that mistake with blackface. But to jump, I have to jump off subject right quick, people. I just need y'all to ride with your boy. Since you from New Orleans, mm-hmm. do y'all have blackface down there? Uh, for Mardi Gras. For Mardi Gras. For what Zulu. is it called? Zulu. Now, it's blackface. Mm-hmm. And what all people wear is blackface? They had a bush. Uh, uh, a wig. I'm talking about who? What, na- what, it'd, what Normally. What nationalities? It'd be, it'd be, uh, as long, see, the thing is, I don't know, I wouldn't think that there would have been that many black people on the floats back then. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it started off with the white people because I don't know what black person like so, back then would have drew their face black when they're already black. You what does saying? it signify? Do you um, know? Well, from what I've been, from what I've noticed, the black face itself has been, you know, a racist uh, character. Uh, cart- it was in cartoons. It's on products from back in the day. And that's what it's always signifies. But with the Zulu, it's just a New Orleans tradition. Meaning, you know, with the parades, you know, they do uh, a whole lot of stuff with masks and paintings. And it is honestly white folks. And now, since they came out with the whole Gucci blackface thing, I thought about that before anybody said anything. I'm like, well, shouldn't the Zulu think about changing that? Because it makes you so, think now. But what exactly is the Zulu? It's like it's a, tra- a traditional, uh, like a traditional. Matter of fact, let me look that up. So they've you know, been doing this for they've been doing this ever for since years. the beginning of Mardi Gras. Ever ever since the beginning of Mardi Gras, it could be even before then. And not nobody had a problem with this black face in the Mardi Gras parade. People probably have, but haven't, but haven't said anything, because is like, it, is it like a big part of the Mardi Gras? Uh, dude, the Zulu. It's on Fat Tuesday. It's on Tuesday, and yes, the Zulu ball. I mean, people, you have to pay a you have to pay a fee to be in a, uh, like a member. I mean, it's it's a whole lot. They have balls. I want to say monthly or uh, every so often, but they continue doing you know uh, things all day, like a little festival, you know. And, but for Mardi Gras, this is when you know they on a float, and the Zulu parade is just the strictly Zulu. So they have I don't know how many floats, maybe a hundred, maybe more. I mean, yeah, and people throwing out coconuts, bees, you know, stuff like that, but. Um, they are in the blackface. Oh, and it's black people, white so people. So, what, what would a person look look up to see this? I, mean, I ain't never been to the Mardi Gras. Uh, what would they look up? Uh, this. Let me see. Zulu parade. I would say look up Zulu parade New Orleans. And uh, let me see. Okay, check it. Uh, it's originated in this Christian tradition. Today, the celebration is better known as a day for people of all faiths, races, and ethnicities to come together at the parades, eat good food, great food, and compete to catch beads. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's deeper than that, you know, by it simply saying uh, Mardi Gras festivals in New Orleans, you know, originated in this, you know, Christian tradition. So I'm pretty sure... At some point, it started from some type of racist, you know, with the blackface itself. Because, like I said, I don't, I have never seen a black person back in the day wear black, you know, So did you face. ever paint your face back Never. Then? I don't, my mom would probably not, I, I ain't really like my face painting. So, you know, I'm I'm thinking like, you know, that, that could be one thing. And by us being used to seeing it, and I think at some point, our parents, didn't know the history of things because they were in the era of or in that time where um 
they were they were free, but at some point um they were able to be comfortable and I want to say gain a living, not to wear as their slaves. So what was told from their parents to them, you know, they're like, okay, cool. You know, and what we was told, it's kind of like, okay. But at the same time, you know, the older we, I know I get, I'm just kind of like the traditions in which, you know, I thought about it and went through. I'm like, that ain't how I feel to this day. So, with that being said, the whole Zulu and the blackface thing, man, it's been going on for years. And it's just something that was blind. we were blindfolded because we wasn't taught. And the whole blackface thing, that was an extremely racist-ass thing. So, you know, it's in tune in depth of some stuff. I never even known that. Yeah. I guess because I've never been down into Mardi Gras, so how would I know that? Man, it's all about Bourbon Street. You say Mardi Gras, you say Bourbon. <laughs> Zulus! But, man, I don't, you know, I don't know, man. These companies, didn't Prada just do something, though? Yeah, they just did something. And <laughs> I'm like, well, dang, I guess... They all got to follow each other at some point. But uh, we did have a um, a call. We put out a question of the week. You know, every week we're going to put out a different question. It's probably easier now because we got more time to let people call in. Yeah. But the question that we had out there was, does job security really exist? And at this time, we will um, play the call in and come back and give you our answer. So does job security really exist? It depends on the job, I think. It depends on what you do. It depends on uh, the high demand of it. But in a general job in retail or anywhere else, no. There's really not job security. You can be replaced by anybody at any point in time. But it depends on the job. This has been from BS3 Sports. Appreciate you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Peace. Hey guys, Trisha from Two Girls on a Bench. Um, just calling about the question you put out, does job security really exist anymore? And I'm going to have to say no. Um, so this year, uh, my husband and Shauna's husband both got laid off, uh, well, end of last year. And uh, totally out of the blue, um, my husband had been employed for 20 years, and they just decided uh, where his location was too expensive and just cut his position. Boom, nothing. And, you know, that happens, especially in, in corporate America. Um, and I work for a big corporation where there's been a lot of layoffs this year. And it's hard to understand because you work for a big company that makes a lot of money. They spend th- money on things like travel and uh, stuff that doesn't seem like it matters. Why, why would they, like, have so little respect for their employees that they – you know, lay them off without even saying goodbye. Um, they just, like, make people disappear. So, yeah, I, I think job security is hard to come by. And, you know, I've been laid off in the past, too, and it's, like, just when you think you have a niche, that makes it so no one could ever possibly lay you off because, let's say, no one could do your job or you know, you have more information than other people you work with. Everybody's replaceable, and it's sad, but the way it is. So it's – uh not a really good landscape out there um, when it comes to and I would say in my opinion um, you know you just gotta like Dory says keep on swimming and uh, do to stay employed and if something happens uh, you're always the next best thing um, that not really make them happy no so let's find something that does and that's hard too. Don't get me wrong, but and we're still working on it. I don't have any answers, <laughs> but um, I don't know if that's what you're looking for. And she is no, there's not job security. Uh, everyone's replaceable, and um, don't be surprised if your company just lets you go without, you know, saying anything. <laughs> this is downer, man. So, anyways, I'm still employed. 
for now. So I will take that blessing and just keep on swimming. Love you guys. Bye. Shout out to uh, Ben for BS3 Sports Podcast for his answer. And Trisha from Two Girls on the Bench Podcast for calling in. We appreciate y'all. And, uh, hey, we're going to have another question out this week. But uh, what's, what's your take on that question? Does job security really exist? Um, I would say. I would say I'll probably think n- not unless it's your business. I mean, even if it's your business, it's not really secure because you can go under at any point, depending on you know. I don't. I don't. Not. Not. Not when you're working for somebody. No, it's not secure because if you hurt yourself, how much FMLA will you get? If you get it. If you get it. Well, you you wasn't on company time, so you can't get the time off. If you can't make, you got to use your vacation time, man. When it snowed, and my my supervisor them asked me if I wanted to take a vacation day or personal, I'm like, dude, it snowed. What do you mean? You mean I gotta take away my vacation time because it snowed? I'm like, this is an emergency, a statewide emergency. <laughs> well, I guess at the same time, do you expect to get paid? And and that's the same thing. I'm not, I'm not mad, but I don't mind taking it. But for days like this, because they have expected snow days. So I'm thinking, well, if it's expected, I'm saying. But should is we... that for the school, the yeah. teachers, but not for the people who work for the school? So did you still expect to get paid even though you didn't go to work? Without using your personal or your vacation time. Yep. No. <laughs> the state emergency. Hey, it's a hey. I this is, they take they have the day set off to the side for if they happen. Well, if they do, just pay me for those days. If you have it set to the side, like we give y'all three to five, you know, days. If if you don't, if they don't happen, I'm just saying, you know, you you don't get it. But if it do, you get it, and we just and we make up for it, and we either way it goes. So I don't know, but no security, the job security. I don't, I don't like I said. If you're working for somebody, it's not secure, cause you can you can be walking home from work soon as you clock clock off, and step off a curve wrong on the premises. You won't get FMLA, cause you're not on the clock. And you like what? Well, dang! So it's like you have to keep yourself one hundred percent. It's like, damn, what can you do? I mean, I know unions make it harder to fire them, fire people. But yeah, me myself, I, don't, I know job security do not exist. Cause if you got like an old guy running a machine, and you got this new perky young guy coming in, you know. All the experience that this old guy had probably go out the window because they're going to want somebody who can up the numbers. <laughs> you know what they do first? They have the old fella <laughs> teach the yeah. other fella. Yeah. And they be like, Just don't know that that's your replacement. Just don't know that's your replacement. You be like, so this whole time, I'm teaching you the ins and outs. And My you, secrets. I'm teaching you the secrets. And you sitting up in here eating it up and like, all right. Be like he reports. I'm done. I got it all. All right, look, uh, Mr. Richard, um, we're gonna have to let a couple of people go. I've been like, I've been working here for forty years. You leave me with a pendant, and that's the thing I don't get. What you work for a company for years, two to three to four decades, and they give you a pendant. Be Probably like, we already got the new person coming in tomorrow. Gotta get you out. Be like, dude, I can't even get no movie tickets. <laughs> Can I get a Jamba Juice? I mean, dude, it's like you put your blood, sweat, and tears on one job for 30 to 40 years. And they give you a pendant to put on your shirt that you're going to probably lose by the time you get to the car. <laughs> yeah. Um, how, how, how would you feel? I mean, if you look at it like that, man. Mm. 
it's hard because you making somebody else's dream come true. You know, you got people who go to work on snow days, mm. weather be terrible outside. They mm. go to work, family emergencies. They still go to work. Mm, still you know, go they to work. Extra loyal to the job, mm-hmm. just for that job not to be loyal to them back. Mm. So that part right there let you know that it does not exist because who are the first people to go if it's a budget cut? The bottom or the bottom? Yeah, the bottom. Like mm. managers and supervisors stay there. They stay there. Like, it's the employees and everybody who down at the bottom the ones who suffer the most. Mm-hmm. And get all the blame for everything. Yeah. Well, you you coming in here late all the time. Are you serious? I came late twice. Well, this money is just overrated. <laughs> it's too much. We don't have to let you go. Or whatever. I wish, man, I wish my, I wish a company would try to tell me, well, I'm going to need you to tell somebody that they need, you, they need to go. Well, depending on what position you in. I think that's what it'd be. So what would you do? What if you, you was a supervisor and you had to let somebody go. That'd be hard. I, I, I wouldn't... If it's... Okay, I, I'm going to say it like this. If it's a person who need to go... Oh, hell, she... Hey, look, look. This slip is pink. You need to leave. <laughs> I'm just saying. They in school? What type of stuff? Hey, the slip is pink. You need to leave. I'm saying, how many pink slip? They gone. But if it's somebody who actually do their work, and it's like, I can't tell them... That they're laid off when they do a whole lot better than this supervisor you got here. That's having double standards. I'm like, nah, man. That's I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, but they're going to have you to lay the person off. Exactly. See, I, I'm, I wouldn't be able to do it. I, 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 I can't sit up there and do that. And, and I know when, depending on what position you're in, you know, that they do this. I don't, and the thing is, I don't like, just for, just as an adult, I don't like when somebody tries to send me to do their dirty work. Be like, if you want that person going, go explain to him why. Don't send me when he's underneath my supervision and my store isn't getting enough support after that person told you what needs to be done. So, have a crack at it. Yeah. That's yeah. how I put it. I guess you got a point there. Yeah, man. But y'all know what time it is. It's quote of the day. How many how many quotes you screenshot this week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I ain't quote none this week. You know, it's been a crazy week. And uh I just wanna tell everybody thank you for rocking with us. It's late night. You know, we uh we still gonna try to bring y'all what we have, you know, everything good. It just that your boys just be busy now. Yeah, you know, they just give you more time to listen and more time to catch up on all the other episodes. I think that's what that is. That's what that means. Y'all know that. Yeah, you know, so when we come back Y'all really going to be on the train with us. But uh, the inspirational quote of the week. Just don't give up trying to do what you really want to do. Where there is love and inspiration, I don't think you can go wrong. And that's a fact, Jack. In the box. In the... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for our callers in. Two yeah. Girls on the Bench podcast and Ben BS3. We yeah. appreciate y'all calling in and leaving y'all answers. We appreciate y'all a lot. You hear me? And then uh, I'm going to hand it over to JR Dot. Yeah, it's your boy Cal signing out. Just stay tuned. You know, we're going to have a lot of different interviews and stuff. We know. And uh, and tell them what else we're going to have on here. We're going we gonna, to we gonna up that, uh, that guest list. Uh... I seen something and uh it was it's basically self motivation. It's called 
10 steps to protect your vibe. 1. Avoid gossip and drama. 2. Let go of things you can't control. 3. Avoid comparing yourself to others. 4. Keep your faith larger than your fears. 5. Don't do anything that doesn't feel right. 6. Don't be afraid to spend some time alone. 7. Speak kindly to yourself and to other people. 8. Uh, please yourself before trying to please others. Once again, please yourself before trying to please others. Nine, stay away from people who drain your energy. And ten, that's hard. That yeah, ignore any opinions that don't enhance your life. I ain't gonna lie, man. You know the hardest thing. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 hard, especially when. You know how you try to go and and be that, you know, uh, you know, see how a person doing. You know, it's been a while. You know what's been happening. Go around and it's the same thing, same story. And the only thing you're doing is just contemplating like, yo, why did I come over here again? I came over here to hear the same thing you talk about. Be like, wow, you... And you know what? And I think at some point you can't feel guilty, you know, uh, because say if you are busy, you know, and the person, you know, uh, your partners are, you know, somebody's on your mind, you know, a family member or whatnot, and you haven't seen them. And, you you know, you go back to see them and go back is the same thing. You're like, you know what, man, I was trying to stay from all that extra, whatever. And it's like you can't, you know, you can't worry about that. You can only do what you can do. And that's protect your heart first, your vibe. Call a person, look, I don't want to hear about that. Because people do come around saying a whole lot of extra, and you could be having the best day. And you get, I should wish, I should be like, I ain't asked for all that. Give me, hey, give me eight step backs like like, like uh, Harden. James Harden, look. <laughs> be like, just give me one James Harden step back. That's four steps, by the way. <laughs> but, uh,. We appreciate y'all coming through, you know, another episode. We got going down. We almost at 100. So we we um very thankful for that. You know, we thank everybody. So, all good things must come to an end. Anything you want to say something before we head out? No, I appreciate y'all for rocking with y'all boys. Stay tuned. Keep checking us out. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. The Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook page. Uh, SoundCloud. Wait, what? It's a SoundCloud. I thought, I thought I said Sunflower. Sunflower. <laughs> <laughs> I Sunflower. But yeah, hey, go do that. We appreciate that. And check out some uh, some of the other podcasts that be rocking with us. Check out that X-Squad affiliates and that No Funny Podcast Network. All day. You know, don't Every miss day. out on their shows because they really be having some stuff going down. We yeah, they got it all, son. We got it all, man. You know, we uh, <clears throat> we have some good people in our corner, you heard me and shh. With that being said, we on to that outro. As you know, Cal and J A Day. Come You know we got them.